God's been good to me. He's been good to me. I know sometimes people only pray, but then when you think about the situations he's brought you through, you just pay for it. Unless you're foolish. Now I once heard a preacher say you can be any kind of fool you want to be, but I won't complain. I'm glad you be here this morning. I'm always glad to be here. Whether I'm speaking or not, I'm glad to be here. Would you bow your heads in a word of prayer with you? Father God, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, Father God. Father God, Lord, I thank you for using me in the way you would have me to work for you, Father God. And Father God, Lord, I know that you don't need me, Father God, Lord. But I thank you, Lord, for using me, Father God. It's just an honor to work for you, Father God. And Father God, Lord, I ask you to take me out of myself, Father God, Lord. That these folks may not see me, Father God, Lord, but they hear your word, Father God, Lord, and they take your word and they share it with somebody else who got the week, Father God, because this is not about me or about the preacher. It's about you, Father God, Lord, and I just want to thank you right now, Father God, for just giving me a message to deliver to your people, Father God. Father God, Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you open their ears as well as their hearts, Father God, that they will accept the message, whether it be good or bad. Because sometimes it ain't stuff that they want to hear, Father God, Lord. But I just got to do what you want me to do and just deliver this word that you would have the way you would have me to do it, Father God. Yes. Father God, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, I, I ask you, Lord, that you touch every heart that's in the house tonight, Father God, Lord. You just we just want to lift you up, Father God, Lord, just give you the praise, Father God. Just be with us all, Father God. Thank you for taking us throughout this week, Father God, Lord. We had some highs and some lows, Father God, but the highs outweighed the lows, and we're just grateful this morning for you, Father God. We just thank you for your son, Jesus, Father God, Lord, that he was sent down to die for our sins, Father God, that we may have a way to enter into the kingdom of heaven. We just thank you, Lord. We just give you the praise. We love you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Would you turn with me to Luke 16, 19 to 31. Some of y'all might be familiar with that. Luke 16, 19 to 31. I'm not going to be too long today. If you heard me before, you know I don't be up here too long. I go ahead and get the word, get the message, get on up out of here. It's not me in 19, it says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of swords, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his swords. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, right. and Lazarus in his bosom. Mm. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, mm. have mercy on me, oh, yeah, yeah. and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger mm. into water to cool my tongue, right. for I am tormented in this flame. Mm -hmm. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Well, well. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed. Hmm. So they that which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass us that would come from hence. Thence, pardon me. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, right. that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. 
Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded who one rose from the dead. And God bless the hearers and the readers of his word. I'm sure a lot of y'all have heard the story of Lazarus and the rich man. And I don't know what you may have gotten from it. But to me, when I read this, when God gave me this particular message, the first thing I thought about was money. Now, I don't like talking about money in church. But money is a part of our lives. So we got to talk about money. You know, there's some money grubbers out there. There's some folk that love money. There's some folk that would do anything for some money. They would commit all the sins for a little piece of change. Y'all heard it said they do something strange for some change. I'm here to let you know that money is not all of that. Now, mind you, I know we need money. But it's how we do things with money and how we act when we get a little bit of money. I want to start with one. When I read verse 1, I got caught up on this word, sumptuously. I said, what is sumptuously? Nah, I had to go look it up. And basically, the dictionary said it was rich. So in 19, we found out that there's a rich man. I don't know no rich folk. But here go one right here. And 20, you know it says, there was a bum. I don't like to call them bums, but y'all know what bums is. Or homeless folk. You know, these days you got to be PC politically correct. So you got a rich man and you got a bum. And the bum laid at the rich man's gates. He laid around his house. And he was full of sores. Now it got to be awful to be a bum first. But when you know you're down on your luck, he you ain't got no money. And now you're laying at the rich man's gate, so you can see somebody over yonder living good. And you over here living bad with sores all over your body. And 21 said he desired to be fed with crumbs. He didn't want no food, he just wanted the crumbs from a rich man table. Crumbs would have been good enough for him. It, it reminds me of the slave days when a slave master would throw the crumbs to the slaves. You ain't get the good part of the pig. You got the bad part of the pig, which was guts, which was chitlins, which people still eat today. Now I say you ain't got to still eat chitlins today. You got other choices. You, you, you can eat pork chops, you can eat the bacon. Then they didn't have no choice. Now we got a choice. Y'all stop eating them chitlins. They don't know good for you. Yeah, I said it. Stop eating chitlins. But this man, he wanted crumbs from the rich man's table. Crumbs would have been good enough. But the rich man wasn't giving out no crumbs. And then on top of that, he's hungry. He can see somebody living good. And then he got dogs licking his sores. Now, I got a dog, but dogs is nasty. I don't want them licking nowhere on me. And I can imagine from the, the passage that it irritated his sores when the dog licked his sores. So that was doing bad. Now this is where you get good at right here. Yeah. 22 it said that the came to pass the beggar died. All right. He died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. All right. Said the rich man died and was buried. Mm -hmm. Don't that sound sad? He, yeah. he didn't bury. Yeah. That's it. He didn't get carried by, by angels into Abraham's bosom. Now that doesn't say he went to heaven. But we can assume, you know, angels carried, carried Lazarus into Abraham's bosom which I assume is in heaven. And 23 it says, and in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torment. Torment. It's, it's already a torment that if you in hell, and you can look up and see somebody living good. Did that remind you when he was on earth, he had money, and, and the beggar Lazarus was looking up and seeing him living good, and now the roles are reversed. 
he's in hell and he can look up and see Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. Get a big old hug. His arms is wrapped around. So that's torment in itself. And then it says he, he cried and said, Father Abraham, what we do every time we get in trouble? Lord, please, God, please help me. Now he's in hell, he's in trouble. Now he want to call on Father Abraham. Now he wants some help. But you ain't want to help this, this bum when he was down at your doorstep looking for crumbs. That's the funny thing about people. I ain't just talking about y'all, I'm talking about me too. When we get in trouble, we want to call on the Lord. Why don't we call on God when things are going good? Why don't we give God the praise when things are going a-okay? But the first sign of trouble, we want to say, oh Lord, oh God, oh please help me. And you'd be mad if you beat a fellow deaf ears. Like I said, I ain't just talking about you, I'm talking about me too. I don't know why we do that. So in 24, like I said, he, he want to call. He want help now. Have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his fingers in the water. And cool my tongue for I am tormented in this way. See, some people think it's hell on earth. It might be bad around here, but it ain't hell. You ain't fine brimstone. And we can see that he has his senses. So if you go to hell, you're going to have your senses. All right, preacher. He just wanted this man to dip his fingers in a little water and flick it on his tongue. Just, just flick it on his tongue. You can't imagine how hot it was. Now, we had a record breaking summer of this summer. And it got up to about 110, 111. And it was hot, but it was probably a thousand times hotter than that if you just wanted a little flick of water on his tongue. He said, a little flick will cool my tongue. Just a little drop. Y'all know when you get thirsty, you want more than a drop. You want to drink the whole bottle. This man was in so much torment that he would have been satisfied with a drop of water on his tongue. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things. So he got all his senses. He can see, because he see Abraham and Lazarus far off. He can feel that fire because he said he was being tormented right. by the flame. Right. He can hear because Abraham spoke to him. He could taste some water. Even though he wasn't getting none, he could taste. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have all your senses in hell. Yes, well, well. Now everybody in here, I know we all think we're going to heaven. Oh, but sometimes we don't do the things that we have to right. to go to heaven. Everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to make the sacrifices to go. There's going to be some things you're going to have to go without. There's going to be some things you're going to have to do. You're going to have to make some lifestyle changes if you want to go to heaven. Now, y'all might have heard me say this before, but a lot of good people going to hell. It's going to be some rich folk in hell, and it's going to be some poor folk in hell, too. Now, don't read really this and think you get it twisted. That just because you poor, you automatically get a ticket to heaven. No, nah, it don't work like that. You're going to have to do some changes. You're going to have to make some sacrifices if you want to get to heaven. You got to live your life right on this earth. See, a lot of people don't understand you got two lives. This is the first life, your life on earth. And your life on earth determines your second life. Whether you're going to be in heaven or hell. Now, that's not my decision. That's up to God. And if you don't like what I'm saying, take that up with him. But it continues in 25 and it says, likewise, Lazarus evil, and Lazarus, likewise, Lazarus had evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art in torment. Just because you're going through something bad on this earth, don't mean it's going to be better on the next side. It can be better. It can be better, but you have to do some, some soul searching. You got to look at yourself. And I'm talking about me too. I don't want y'all to think I'm just talking about y'all because I ain't no better than nobody up in here. Everybody up in here got sin. We just trying to fix ourselves. Sometimes we, we can't fix ourselves. Only God can fix us. But you got to make up your mind on what you want to do. Ain't nobody going to make it. Everybody in here got free will. Now when you're little, your parents make you go to church. But then when you get grown, sometimes we get tired of church. Especially if you type in with the church every day. Monday night prayer. 
Tuesday night this, Wednesday night that, Saturday, Sunday, every day he was in church. Then you get wrong. <laughs> and you think you want to go your own way. But our parents know what they're talking about when they take you to church. We can't see it then. But then when you get grown, you find out some, some things is, is rough out here. Mom and daddy knew what they were talking about by taking you to church every day, if that was the case. I don't want to get off the subject. <laughs> but, uh, 26 it says, and besides all this, between us there's a great gulf. So even if I wanted to drip some water on your tongue, I can't. There's a, 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 a like a wall here between me and you. I can see you, you can see me, but ain't nothing nobody can do about it. That reminds me of people talking about near-death experiences. Mm -hmm. well. Now why in the world, you know, they say, you know, I, I walked towards the light and this happened and I was in heaven and then I was back on earth. Why would you go to heaven and, and then come back? Oh what is better than heaven? Nothing on this earth is better than heaven. So I really don't believe in no near-death experiences. You might have had a little dream or a hallucination, but you ain't went to heaven and then decided to come back. If I go to heaven, that's it. I'll see y'all later. I ain't coming back. You know what I mean? Ain't no coming back from heaven. And it ain't no coming back from hell on the same token. If you go to hell, that's where you at. You ain't getting out. Ain't no uh go to uh get out of jail free card. Ain't no uh pass go collect two hundred dollars. You there? That's where you at. So don't be caught up with these near death experiences. I went to heaven and came back. No, you didn't. You just lied. <laughs> so it says, you know, you cannot pass. You cannot pass. Neither can they pass unto us. That will be from this. You ain't no going back either way. You in heaven, that's where you at. If you in hell, that's where you at. That, that's, that's torturous. To, to be in hell with all your five senses, senses and sin, man, I could have been there. Only if I had lived my life right and did what I was supposed to do and to serve God, I could be in heaven. You know, philosophers, they, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> The meaning of life is to serve God in whatever capacity that you can. That is a very simple question. Answer, what is it to, 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 what is life about? Life is about service. It's not about you. Well, you know, some folks, well, you know, I'll take care of my kids and I'm a good man and blah, 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 but you ain't serving God. You ain't using your talents to serve God. Well, whatever they may be, we got to use our whole self to serve God. Ain't no halfway. You know, serving God on Sunday and the heat is Monday through Saturday. You know what I'm saying? You got to be both feet in. You got to get in where you fit in. That's what they say. So go ahead and serve God with your whole body. All the time. All the time. You know, sometimes people, they know a different person of you at work. You was a different person at work than you is at the church. You holier than thou in church, and then work you the biggest heathen in the world. You know what I'm saying? You out there shooting the breeze with everybody, getting your cuss on and everything. And it's like, well, who is this dude? And I ain't bragging on myself, but you know, I, I, they get tired of me talking about God at church. You know, it, it, sometimes it's like, oh, here come Walter. Man, I'm going. Because they know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Anytime they want to talk to me, I'm talking about the Lord. It just gives you a chance to, to testify. You never know what word might have on somebody. 27 says, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send us me to my him to my father's house. Now he begged, please, please send Lazarus to my father's house. For what? For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, yes, lest they also come into this place of torment. Mm. I got five brothers and I don't want them to come to hell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Abraham, said, Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear. Mm. Basically, 
if they ain't hearing them, All right. they ain't gonna hear nobody else. Yes, right. that's what it says. Yes, sir. If you got Moses and the prophets and they telling you what you need to be doing and you're not hearing, All it right. don't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, the word says, the love of money is the root of all evil. Yes, the love of money, not money. Mm -hmm. It, it, it kind of irks me when people say, you know, the money is the root of all evil. No, it's not the money. No it's the love of money. Amen. What will you do for money? What have you done for money? Well, well, well. Just ask yourself. All right, preacher. <laughs> you know, sometimes we wonder why we don't have a lot of money. And I think of it like, you know, when you ask your parents for something, they say no. Mm -hmm. They say no because they know what's best for you. Amen. Maybe God ain't bless your finances because he know how you would act if you have. Sometimes, all the time, he knows what's best for us, even when we don't know what's best for us. When money comes power, yeah, yeah, right. people get the big head when they got a little money in their pocket. They want to call some shots. They say money will change you. But money don't change you. Money makes the person who you really are just come out. So you can fake like you somebody else when you ain't got no money, but then when you get that money, you feel like, oh, I can really be you now. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Y'all be careful, you know what I'm saying? Move that money, move that money. Move that money. It can be a new thing, the love of it. And you got today, with all this Occupy Wall Street, and Occupy this, and Occupy that, you know, people is mad that they ain't got no money. But they not looking at what they do have. All right, say that. They got some time to be sitting in a park talking about I want some money. Now, ain't nothing wrong with protesting. That's all right. You know, we Americans, we, we got that right to go ahead and protest. Right. But you need to count your blessings Amen. instead of worrying about the next man's blessings. Because right. it's funny that, you know, you think you're doing real bad, and you talk to the next man, and he wish he had your life. Because right. his story is so much worse than yours. Right. And sometimes we need to hear that to realize what we got. Right. So y'all be careful about that money. 30 says, and he says, nay, father, Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. And I read that and I thought about people at work I talk to all the time. And I say, man, what you want? You want Jesus to come down here and slap you in your face and tell you to get your mind right? Even if that happened, you still want to try to explain it all. You know, sometimes we see miracles every day and we call them coincidences. Right. What is a coincidence? Right. I don't even know the definition of that word, a coincidence. It's like saying God don't know what's going to happen. This just happened to happen. Right. God knows everything, so there are no coincidences. Right. I found $20 on the floor. What a coincidence. It's about a lucky day. What is luck? Who believes in luck? Ain't no luck. Ain't no luck. God knows what's going to happen. Recognize. And you know, I got a couple testimonies. I talk about them to people at work, and they always try to explain it away. Well, this happened and that happened. Okay, you can say what you want to say. I'm trying to tell you what happened. I'm trying to give you a, a, a testimony, and you don't want to believe what I'm saying. You want to try to explain it away. Don't explain away God's miracles. All right, say that. So, you know, like in 30, he's saying it don't matter who. He said he wants somebody from the dead, like that'll be a great miracle to show them, you know, he didn't want his five brothers to go to hell. And Abraham said unto him, if they didn't hear Moses and the prophets, neither would they be persuaded through one through one rose from the dead. It don't matter. Some people are so blinded, you know, they got on blinders. Like a horse. They can only see this. They can only see right here. They can't see nothing on the left or the right. They can only see straight in front of them. So this, this passage to me is all about money. Leave that money, leave that money alone. If you ain't got no money, what well, all right then? What do you have? 
You got your help. All right. I ain't got no money in my pocket right now, but I got God. Right. And when you got God, you don't need no money. When you got God, He will provide for you no matter which way. You don't know where that money coming from. You know, you have a circumstance where you needed some money and some money came through, and you said, Lord, have mercy. We had a circumstance like that at this church. A check showed up in the mail. on God. You got to do what he do. You got to believe that he will provide for you. Worse if you have faith to solve the bus and see move on. Keep your faith on God. Keep your eyes on the prize which is the Lord. And don't be worried about this money. Amen. That's all I got. Don't worry about that money.